Hello everyone and welcome back to Clinical Cousins YouTube channel where today we're going to go over how the adrenergic receptors work in our cells to create sympathetic responses. And just a quick recap, we know that the sympathetic pre-G neurons from the level of T1 to L3 will communicate with our post-G sympathetic neurons via acetylcholine and nicotinic 2 receptors. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. What we're talking about today is how norepinephrine, which is released by the post-G receptors, will activate four types of receptors that are called adrenergic receptors. So a great acronym to know is CISR, or Constrict, Inhibit, Speed Up, Relax. So alpha-1, Constrict, alpha-2, Inhibit, beta-1, Speed Up, beta-2, Relax. And also we're going to talk about FB before A and norep A before B. So what we need to know, or we need to understand rather, is that all of these adrenoreceptors are really just G proteins. They're sometimes called seven pass receptors because they weave in and out of the cell membrane, sort of like stitches. So if this is a G protein, it's kind of stuck to the top of the cell membrane. So these G proteins are consisted, uh, are composed of rather of an alpha, beta, and gamma unit, but we're only going to talk about the alpha unit today. So the neurotransmitter, which in our case is norepinephrine, will bind to the outer portion of that G protein, and then the alpha subunit, remember that's the important one that we're talking about today, will bind to GTP, and then this alpha unit will start a chain reaction which will increase substances called second messengers in the cell. So when we increase these second messengers, it's basically like we're taking a whisper and we're shouting so that we can have a sympathetic action in the cell. So basically, once a neurotransmitter binds to our G protein, that receptor will become activated or switched on, and it will send a message to the cell to get to work. So first, we have the alpha-1 receptor. So in general terms, we need to remember that it will constrict our blood vessels, which will raise our blood pressure. So how does it do this? Well, intuitively, we know from our other videos that smooth muscle contract, contraction, remember, in the blood vessels, it's smooth muscle, is dependent on the amount of calcium inside the cell. So how do we get there? How do we get from norepinephrine to constriction? Well, first, norepinephrine is released from our post-G neurons, axon varicosities. This norepinephrine will bind to the outer portion of our G protein, the outer portion of our alpha-1 receptor. This activated G protein will then go and activate an enzyme called phospholipase C. This will generate more IP3 substance, which will activate protein kinase C, which will cause an action inside the cell. Specifically, it will constrict. So I call this the phospholipase C IP3 protein kinase C pathway, or the CIP3C pathway. So the end result is that our blood vessels our GI tract sphincters and our bladder, when we need to pee, of course, will become contracted or constricted. Now, what if we gave our patient a drug like prezosin or hydralazine? Now, these drugs block our alpha-1 receptors. So what will be the result? Well, now we know that we would block the constriction of our blood vessels and lower our patient's blood pressure. Now, what about alpha-2 receptors? Well, alpha-2 inhibits, alpha-2 inhibits. Specifically, it inhibits the release of norepinephrine. So this is a concept that confuses a lot of people. And what we need to know is that an alpha-2 agonist will result in the release of less norepinephrine. So for example, if we give an alpha-2 agonist like clonidine, it decreases the amount of norepinephrine which is released, which will cause a decrease in blood pressure and a decrease in pain. So these alpha-2 receptors are activated when we are using our sympathetic nervous system too much. So basically, alpha-2 receptors help us conserve our norepinephrine so that we don't run out. So an interesting fact is that we don't have these conservatory alpha-2 receptors in our adrenal medulla. So we can actually run out of circulating norepinephrine. So Enough about that, how do these receptors actually work? So let's say that we release some norepinephrine from a sympathetic post-G neuron. So this norepinephrine 
that we release will bind to these alpha-2 receptors on the presynaptic terminal of our neurons, which would be located about right here. So they bind to the presynaptic terminal of our neurons and they will activate these inhibitory G proteins. Remember, alpha-2 inhibit. It will activate the inhibitory G protein, which will block adenylylcyclase. In simple terms, the activation of our alpha-2 receptors will block the release of norepinephrine from our axons of our, our post-gene neurons. So now we're going to talk about the beta-1 receptors. These are extremely, extremely popular. They speed up the actions of our cells. Remember, CIS, we're talking about the S right now, which is speed up. So specifically, we have beta-1 receptors in our SA node, our AB node, our ventricular myocytes, our salivary glands, our fat cells, and our kidneys, and those actions will be an increased heart rate, an increased conduction velocity through our heart, an increase in our heart's contractility, an increase in salivary production, lipolysis, or the destruction of fat cells, and in the kidneys, it will secrete renin, which will eventually raise our blood pressure by the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. So as we can see, these are some of the most important receptors in our body, but how do they work? Well, norepinephrine, as shown here, binds to the outer portion of our beta-1 G protein. This G protein will activate adenylylcyclase, or AC. The important job of AC is that it converts ATP, yes, the popular energy molecule, into cyclic AMP. This is our second messenger. This is our shouter. This is an amplifier which will actually result in the action of the cell. In our case, beta-1 speeds up. So beta-1 receptors can actually be blocked with drugs like atenolol and metoprolol. So let's say that we're blocking our beta-1 receptor. Why are these drugs called cardioselective beta blockers? Well, we know that we have a ton of beta-1 receptors in our heart, so when we block these with drugs like metoprolol and atenolol, which only block beta-1, we say that they are cardioselective. So when we, block these, when we block these receptors, we will decrease our heart rate, conduction, and contractility. So lastly, we're going to talk about the beta-2 receptors, and beta-2 receptors relax. They are found in the blood vessels of our skeletal muscle, in our bronchioles, and in our GI tract and bladder. So these will relax or dilate our bronchioles and the blood vessels of our skeletal muscle. These receptors have the same mechanism of action as the beta-1 receptors. Norepinephrine, we're not going to block this anymore, norepinephrine will bind to and activate these G proteins, which will activate adenylylcyclase, which will result and an increase in cyclic AMP, which will result in relaxation. So a very, very important drug to remember is albuterol. So this is a beta-2 agonist. So let's say that we give the patient some albuterol. So albuterol acts on our beta-2 receptors as an agonist to dilate our airways. This is why it is so helpful in patients with asthma and COPD. Now, if you're going to be using any drugs that mimic the sympathetic nervous system, which is highly likely, you should remember this acronym. At B before A and nor up A before B. And we're talking about beta, alpha, alpha, beta. So epinephrine will actually activate our beta 1 and beta 2 speed up and relax receptors at low doses before it activates alpha constriction. So this is why we stick people in the thigh with EpiPens when they are having an allergic reaction. We give them epinephrine to activate the beta-1 and beta-2 receptors to speed up their heart rate and dilate their airways so that they don't die. Also, it will provide some alpha constriction to raise the blood pressure at higher doses. Remember, at B before A. Now, nor at A before B, nor Epi will activate alpha constriction first before it activates the beta receptors. So this is why you'll see patients who are first 
They load them up with fluid in the emergency department, in the hospital, and then they put them on the drug Levofed. This is synthetic norepinephrine. So first, we pump their circulatory system full of fluid. We're giving the car some gas, and then we constrict the vessels hard with Levofed so that we can raise their blood pressure. But if you've, if you've learned anything, please remember scissor or constrict, inhibit, speed up, and relax because this is what you're going to remember in the clinical setting. It's going to help you quickly determine how a drug works, how it works. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to learn with us today. And remember to like and subscribe for more content.